Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. March 11, 2025 is the date. 10, 12 p.m. That's California time here. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.2 earthquake up into Alaska region. Uh, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity on the map. Uh, largest movement going to be a 7.6 here across the Peru area. That's a super deep earthquake here underneath the region into the Peru Chile Trench. Man, I, it's been a while since I've seen a super deep earthquake like that into that region. Um, that um, looks like it's triggering a little bit of uh, interesting earthquake activity upstream here from that deeper quake. Uh, so got to watch this area here along the Peru Chile Trench. That could be a, a sign that we're looking at some maybe some larger activity about ready to take place here. So that's definitely, I mean, that's 400 miles deep. I don't know if it gets any deeper than that, but uh, it's a super deep one, let me tell you. All right, Texas area, Oklahoma, same stuff. Oil-filled earthquakes, that's what they are. Um, for the West Coast out here, 2.5 and above. Let me go ahead and bring this back to the latest Shows uh, 2.8 across Lower Lake area. This is outside the Clear Lake Volcanic Field region, not associated with the geothermal operations. Uh, a little interesting quake out there. Uh, some movement al also up into northern Nevada, 3.1 across the Sheldon National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, also some activity stirring up down south here across the Yarrington area of Nevada. Uh, really nothing major going on here across Southern California for now. Pretty quiet out there. A uh, little spotty movement in the Little Creek area of Southern Cal. But uh, aside from that, things at the moment uh, appear to be on the calm side. But that could always change, right? Uh, nothing going on along the Cascadia. But I do want to double check the trimmer map this evening. Which consists of 39 epicenters here across the Seattle area. Last time we seen something like this, we started to notice an uptick here in earthquake activity. Uh, across this area of the Puget Sound. Uh, right now, not a whole lot, but I, I wouldn't doubt if we start to see things uh, escalate out here once again in terms of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, more felt earthquake activity. A couple of smaller quakes up around Mount Rainier. Very shallow earthquake activity. Um, we can check out the Mount Rainier. Uh, seismograph station out here real quick see if we got anything of unusual activity uh, it's pretty common to see a, a handful of earthquakes there on any given week any given month out there across Mount Rainier or any, any other cascade volcanoes uh, I don't see anything of any uh, unusual activity pretty quiet out there there's an earthquake this is interference maybe some ice quakes out there as well but earthquakes are going to show up more distinct and there's really nothing of any uh any unusual activity out there for now. Uh, same down here across the Mount St. Helens area. A little bit of movement up there around the summit area. Uh, I guess on that note, we should probably check the uh, area as well. <clears throat> See if there's anything unusual going on across the summit area of, of the Mount St. Helens region. Up at the uh, summit area. This is a fairly well-defined seismograph station. Nothing major going on there from what I can tell. There's a couple of the earthquakes there in the background, but really nothing of any unusual uh, activity to note there. Uh, let's see here. Bay Area, pretty quiet. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the globe here on the Earthquake 3D model. Pretty good uptick going on here across the Middle America Trench with the latest of 4.1 there off the coast probably uh, right around this area down here across guatemala maybe uh, el salvador area san salvador region that uh a lot a lot going on here a lot of uh, earthquake activity along the middle america trench let me put this here on the oceanic crest view and that pressure transfer from the middle america trench is definitely affecting the area here across the caribbean plate it's highly noticeable with this earthquake occurring wells away from the plate boundary into an area that we really don't see a lot of earthquake activity in. So that means that this area down here is quite strained. Uh, you know, and that's not the only earthquake here, that 5.4, that tells me that things are strained out here. We've seen, you know, the largest earthquake so far this year, 7.6 here across the northwestern or northern edge here of the Caribbean plate. 
uh, not to mention uh, all the earthquake activity here around Puerto Rico and the trench region. So things are amplified out here. And this area of the Caribbean plate, uh, you know, they can get some big earthquakes out here. Just give a quick glance here and show you guys um, what I mean. We're going to go 6.5. We're just going to look back here. Throughout time. Time, right? What is time? Okay, let's not go that deep into it. But uh, we'll check this area out here across the uh, Puerto Rico Trench. And not so much into Middle America Trench. Obvious, obviously, we know there is some big earthquake activity that can take place out there. I just want to look here around the Caribbean plate and see what we got here. So there's the latest quake of 7.6. Technically, the largest earthquake in this area um, far as history goes. Prior to that, there was a 7.5 back in 2018. So that's a decent earthquake. Uh, the largest magnitude out here across the area is going to be a 8.5 back in 1843 here across the Guadal uh, Guadalupe area. Um, subduction zone that sits over here. And that's a that's a uh, that was a pretty big earthquake. 1946, a 7.8 up here across the Dominican Republic. Lots of sevens out there, so you know things can get uh, rather interesting out here in terms of larger scale potential. And when the Caribbean plate is underneath the uh, squeeze out there, you gotta pay attention. So just keep an eye on this region here. Uh, a lot of movement out in the Atlantic here recently. Let's see what we got. Things have calmed down, though, it looks like, uh, for the most part, throughout the day today. Some movement around the uh, uh, Santorini area, also here across the region of, let's see here, that would be outside of Iran, it looks like, down here. Some movement up into the uh, Afghanistan area as well with a couple fours. Not see anything spectacular going on, but a, you know, a little bit of uptick here around the Santorini area of Greece. I guess we better go check that out real quick here from the Raspberry Shake data site, and uh, we'll take a look, see what we got going on here. As far as earthquake activity goes, you never know. This can mellow out for a little bit, and then we can see this thing uptick. Right now, 419 earthquakes here in the last week. Really, nothing big. Um, the latest, a 2.8 there in the cluster of earthquakes. These guys are reporting a 2.1 in Southern California. So let's go see what's going on out there. All right, there it is. Octilla Wells region, that's on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Not a big earthquake, but uh, I guess one of the larger ones, if you consider that here in the area today, as far as microquake activity goes. But... Uh, nothing of abnormal activity, but we do got to be prepared. Uh, Hawaii. Oops. I'll go back here to my Hawaii station. That uh, paused once again. Remember I said it was going to pause by probably tonight? Well, you know, it was pretty much spot on once again here. The episode 13 ended at 3.13 p.m. today, March 11th. How about that? Very visible. When you look at these graphs, the eruption and the pause are extremely well defined here. This is the last two days. Um, there's the eruption. Back, um, it just happened early this morning. Not a long-lived eruption at all. So very short-lived eruption. There's the pause in episode 13. And now we're going back up very visible here on the past month and it's it's been an ongoing thing 13 episodes of this rinse and repeat cycle here i mean i wish i had the money the time you know to go out there and set up for the visual of the eruption right before it starts that would be awesome to see but uh yeah so we'll watch here in a couple of, oh, no, probably about four to six days we'll see this go back up here this is our latest pause in the eruption if it follows the similar trends here in the last 13 episodes we got a few days to build up and then the eruption begins again how about that pretty crazy huh all right uh space weather activity well let me look at new zealand here kind of jumped over new zealand area 
Uh, pretty quiet. Back to back to being quiet out here again. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, Crow Cam Chatka Trench of 4.3. Uh, aside from that, really nothing major happening out here right now, but this not jinx it. Uh, solar blackout going on right now due to the uh, spacecraft being observed or uh, uh, eclipsed. Sun's being eclipsed uh, by the Earth, leading to that uh, blackout that occurs every 24 hours there. Uh, there is an active area out on the eastern limb, notice down here. Getting some uh, neat little magnetic arches out here. Kicking off of that sunspot region. That's the one I've been talking about here. Um, let me see if it's visible yet. Not quite. Not quite at all. It's further out here across the area of the eastern limb. And that is visible, though, if you look on the far side sun watch right here. Uh, this is not correct, but here we go. 311, that's today. This area right here looks like it's somewhat active, at least according to the UV filter there. It shows some signs of uh, some flaring going on out there across that region. So we'll watch that here in the coming days. See if things don't kick back up here in terms of solar weather activity. The sunspots that are currently facing the Earth, well, there, there's not a whole lot here. Well, there, I shouldn't say that. There's quite a bit, right? But there's not a whole lot here in terms of anything interesting it looks pretty quiet uh, i guess if you twisted my arm a little bit and a little bit longer it made me pick an area to watch uh you gotta twist a little bit harder here because <laughs> finding a hard one to pick maybe this area right here for now uh, but there's really not a whole lot there in terms of solar flare potential but again that could change here with that arrival of that far side sunspot not yet visible there on the earth facing side overall flare threat i'm issuing a one percent chance or less these guys showing a five percent uh, m flare at 35 i'm issuing a 40 percent chance uh, no major auroras in the forecast uh, it does look like things are stirring up a little bit though across the auroras um, even those these guys are showing quiet out here there's a little bit of aurora forecast here not for sure exactly where that's coming from but uh, maybe maybe just some typical solar wind stream out there but really nothing of any you know major newsworthy value out there for now storm prediction center man look at this weekend day four day five talk about some severe weather out there potential right depends on who you ask a lot of people are saying this could be a tor tornado outbreak. A lot of people are, are saying that it's over, you know, being overblown. You know, the thing is, to be complacent with a scenario like this is not good. It's always good to just be prepared, whether it's overblown or not. There's a severe weather threat that's going to take place out here Friday and the Saturday out here across this area of the country due to a massive low-pressure system that's currently in route here to northern california that's going to bring us some rainfall a lot of snow up there that low pressure will swiftly travel east here across the country and uh you know stir up that severe weather potential out here this weekend so just be on guard out there across that region after that uh, a little clearing california a little bit more storm systems going on there and uh, hard to say exactly what's going to happen after that but uh, we'll just kind of watch things, see how it plays out. Things can change in a blink of an eye. Little earthquake there in Southern Cal. That's, a, that's not the two-pointer coming in, I don't think. 25. It may be, though. A station there, Barrett, uh, in Southern California is way down south there. So it maybe just picked up that two-pointer. But uh, for now, nothing major going on, folks. Just It's a uh, typical night out there, I would say, across the, uh, across the planet in terms of earthquake activity. Have yourself a good one, folks. Tomorrow is Wednesday, halfway through the work week. I think uh, Friday will be here before we know it. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here in the morning.